So having done all the simulations in um, Excel using the macros and VB script, um, it was time to produce the first prototype robot. So this is a robot that uses uh, the camera module that I've shown on the blog earlier, um, a motor module from, oh I forget the name of the company but I'll put it on the blog, the FitPC computer and uh, the, Fit P the battery for the FitPC but it's not currently connected, it's just tethered um, up to the power supply. Um, underneath, connected to the motor controller, we've got two geared motors that I've just put onto these gear wheels um, just to get some traction on this grass. It's all mounted on some pine um, just to hold it all together. And then in the test area, I've got, um, well, three infrared points. These infrared modules are just a little kit board from Maplins and they're wired up currently to the mains just so I don't have to keep replacing batteries. There's one there, uh, one there on top of a container, and one there neatly attached to a whiskey bottle. Um, and they're tracked in a 360 degree view by that centre camera on the robot. Currently all I've got connected to the robot is power supply for the motors, so that's just running 12 volts over here. And um, power for the PC, as I said, I'm not running off the, its own battery yet. And then also the HDMI cable to the computer screen, which I have over here. Now the programs I've got running are the Robo Real M, which is running with an uh, API um, connection to this software, which I've just made, it's still being debugged basically, it's running through um, Visual Basic. And what this is doing is it's tracking all the points, these are basically the new input angles, but then they're assigned to each infrared point is tracked and assigned. So I might write in more detail on this on the blog itself, but basically if an infrared point one or sorry, if infrared point three goes past 360 and becomes one degrees, it's tracked. So it actually does stay there, whereas this will stay in order um, starting from lowest to highest. But as I say, I'll try and explain that in more detail um, on the blog post. Um, so what I've set up at the moment just to test it is keyboard control. I've got a sort of uh, A, A, Z, K, M for each motor. And I using that, I can surface B control, go back, forward, spin it on the spot. And that works fine. But um, what I'm actually showing with this video is the next stage, um, which is the mapping sequence. So what it's doing is recording, it's going to do a sequence where it records the angle it sees at the moment of the three points, and then it moves forward by a set distance, and then it re records the new position, and from that can calculate the x and y coordinates of each of the infrared points of light. So if I run that mapping sequence, hopefully it will work. Uh, comes up with this starting point mapping sequence so before I click that show the robot itself it's fairly uh, not particularly spectacular all it's done is move forward recorded its two points and that gives us although I haven't laid this out very neatly uh, X and Y coordinates for um, each blob so we've got minus 5325 so that's that's the point on the far left. It's considered to be, it's just connected to the leg of that table. It's considered to be minus 54, um, sorry, minus 53.25. The one nearest this is minus 14, sorry, 14x minus 13y. So it's behind and slightly to the right, which is correct. And, or looks correct so far. And the final point is in the corner there is 22.34. So again, should be, uh, yeah, forward and to the right of the robot. So it looks like it's mapped that correctly, but uh, I won't know until I properly plotted it into a graph or Excel. I won't know the accuracy um, properly. The distances are, are not set. It's basically done on a unit distance. So that distance that moved forward was done on a time moving forward. Um, so I need to assign that time. I don't, I don't necessarily need to put a scale as long as it's all working to the same scale. Either way, the next stage of this is to take those three points then use the circle intersection part of the equations that I've put on the blog 
and write that up into Visual Basic so it can in real time track its own position based now on those known coordinates. Um, so I'll put another post up in a little bit.